listening to This Week in Big Sky Basketball as we take you around the conference for all the latest in Big Sky hoops. Now, here's your host, Scott Gerard. Hey, welcome on in. It's another edition of This Week in Big Sky Basketball. I'm Scott Gerard. Hey, we're halfway through the Big Sky Conference slate. Just five weeks remain until teams compete for the conference crown in Boise. Now, on the women's side, three teams still sit with two losses. Idaho, Idaho State, and Northern Colorado currently taking that top spot. And Big Sky men's hoops, reigning champion Montana, sits alone at the top of the standings with two losses in conference action. Guest today, Weber State junior guard Jarek Harding, also Idaho State women's head coach Seton Sobleski. Also, Colter Nuanez of Skyline Sports. They'll talk about some of the big storylines from around the league. Let's start well on the men's side. Montana took over sole possession of first place in the conference standings as the Grizz knocked off Montana State 83-78 to in Bozeman to improve to 8-2 in Big Sky play. Weber State fell at home to Portland State 76-75 to drop to 8-3 in conference with a 1-1 week following a win over Sac State. Jarek Harding averaged 26.5 points in the Wildcats' two games, and we'll chat with him here in just a moment. Northern Colorado handed a 69-66 defeat to Montana State at home to move alongside the Wildcats in the standings after playing its only game of the week. Eastern Washington led the league with two wins last week with home victories over Southern Utah and Northern Arizona to move to 6-4 and four and remain in fourth place in the standings. Sophomore Jacob Davison averaged 31 points on the week with a 41-point performance in the win over NAU to record the most points by a Big Sky player this season. Also picking up one win on the week, Idaho State, Northern Arizona, Sacramento State, and Southern Utah. All right, always fun to chat with this young man. One of the top scorers in the Big Sky this season, Weber State's Jarek Harding. Jarek, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing well. Always good to chat with you. Now, you sat out the first two games of the season with an injury, but you put together a great junior campaign. Let's talk about some of the uh, parts of your game that you really focused on coming into the season and how you feel that's playing out for you right now. Um, the biggest the biggest thing I wanted to bring into this season was my leadership. I feel like being a junior, being that upperclassman, I feel like I just uh, had to get my teammates going, pick up their energy, and just do whatever I had to do on the court in order for us to win. So I feel like uh, I've been doing that pretty well this season, and it's been showing. Now, I've known uh, Randy Ray for quite a while, and I remember looking at recruiting classes and recruiting announcements, and I saw that uh, this young man from Wichita, Kansas, was coming to Ogden, Utah, the Kansas Gatorade Player of the Year. What was it on Weber State that said, you know what, I'm ready to go across the country and play for this school? Um, it, it's funny because my dad, so my dad, uh, he works on, like, tracks, building tracks around the country, and uh, like I think it was like six years ago, he came to uh, Ogden, Utah, and he saw like the campus and stuff like that. Because uh, he was doing like the track at Hill Air Force yeah. Base, and he, he just he just loved it here. So ooh, when it was time for uh, my recruiting process or whatever, when I came out here for my visit, uh, he already knew like the environment and everything like that. And I also fell in love with it too when I came on my recruiting visit. So. Yeah. So when when you got here and you saw the campus and you saw you know and met the coaching staff, it was pretty much a done deal, huh? Yeah, it's basically a done deal. It was, it was just like a family atmosphere. Um, I loved how like the campus is set up, like right on the side of the mountain. It's beautiful here, so yeah, it was, it was a great place for me to come. Randy Ray's been the coach there for so long at Weber State. Uh, what's it like playing for him? And you know, I, I I know him a little bit and know that he's a demanding guy. What what's it like playing for a coach like that? Um, I, I love playing for Coach Ray. He, he's always going to tell you the truth. He pushes you hard. He's uh, he's just a down to earth person, and he's he's just a great person, great great uh, person to look up to. So yeah, I, I love playing for Coach Ray. 20-game conference schedule for the Big Sky. What's it been like playing in such a competitive league uh, that, you know, when you're growing up in Kansas, you may not hear a lot about the Big Sky, but when you get here, I'm sure you found out pretty quickly there's a lot of good hoops here. Yeah, definitely. Um, this It's a guard-heavy uh, conference. There's a lot of good guards in our conference. And I feel like uh, teams have to bring their A game every night. I mean, you can't you can't come to a game and just coast. Like, you've seen Northern Colorado lost yesterday. We dropped a couple that we, should, we probably shouldn't have dropped. But, yeah, you got to bring your A game every game. Can't can't coast. You uh, traveled down to Cedar City this week to face off against Southern Utah, and uh, we all remember that overtime game last month. Uh, have you had this game circled for a, while, for a bit? You excited to get down there and uh, and go against the Thunderbirds in that rematch? Oh, yes. We're, we're definitely excited. 
we we owe him one definitely. Definitely owe him one. What's the uh, what's the key to coming out of there with the W? Uh, really just sticking to our scouting report. I feel like uh, last time we played them, we didn't do a good job of executing on the offense or defense spin. So, yeah, just paying attention to the scouting report, being locked in. And going on the road, you have to have more energy than, than them coming in. So, yeah, we just have to be on edge when we go in that place. You, uh, you've you got about five weeks left in the regular season. What does Weber State need to improve on? What do you guys need to work on to make sure you're playing your best basketball going into Boise? Um. I feel like we just have to be more consistent. That, that, that's the biggest thing. I mean, in February, uh, teams usually either splinter and go downhill or they come together and uh, they just come together and win games, really. So, yeah, that's what we're trying to focus on right now is just being consistent. You, uh, you're you playing through your junior year right now at Weber State. Uh, what do you want to try to improve on? What are some aspects of your game you want to uh, – continue to improve on not only this year but going into next year as well um one big thing is my passing i feel like that's um that's been looked down upon on, on my game i guess you can say uh I, I feel like i'm a good passer but i just feel like i have to i have to show it out there on the court well jarek we appreciate your time good luck this weekend and uh good luck the rest of the way i appreciate you you got it. Jared Carding from Weber State joining us today right here on This Week in Big Sky Basketball. Hey, for the last 30 years, Sports Graphics has been a leader in providing signage and services for the top professional and amateur sporting events across the country. That's why the Big Sky Conference is proud to work with Sports Graphics for all our signage at Big Sky Championship. Sports Graphics, proud sponsor of the Big Sky. Take a short break. Come back with Idaho State women's head coach Seton Sobleski. Also discuss what's been going on in Big Sky women's basketball. It's all straight ahead right here on This Week in Big Sky Hoops. CenturyLink Arena plays host to the 2019 Big Sky Men's and Women's Basketball Championships in Boise. Postseason college basketball is back in Boise, and we have your front row seat to the event. The women's tournament will be held March 11th through the 15th, while the men's championship will take place March 13th through the 16th. The wait is over. 22 teams, 20 games, two champions. Don't miss your chance to buy tickets for this fun-filled week of basketball. Tickets are on sale now at BigSkyInBoise.com. Traveling to watch your favorite team, or you just need a weekend away? Let My Place be your place for both. My Place Hotels is proud to be the official hotel of the Big Sky Conference. And now you can use booking code BIGSKY19 to receive 19% off your stay at MyPlaceHotels.com. You're listening to This Week in Big Sky Basketball. Welcome on back. Segment number two here on this edition of This Week in Big Sky Basketball. And remember, the 2019 Big Sky Men's and Women's Basketball Championships presented by My Place Hotels are headed to Boise in 2019. Visit BigSkyInBoise.com to purchase your tickets and get hotel information. The Big Sky Conference taking over Boise March 11th through the 16th, and we want to see you out there. And remember, if you need a hotel for work or just a night away, over 44 hotels open and more on the way. We want to be your home away from home. That's My Place Hotels, proud to be the official hotel of the Big Sky Conference. All right, let's take a look on what's happening on the Big Sky women's side. As we pass the midway point of the schedule, there begins to be a little bit more separation at the top of the standings. Idaho State and Northern Colorado sit atop with a 92 record, and right behind them is Idaho, who sit a half game back at 8 and 2. Portland State sits at number four in the conference standings. They went 1 and 1 after beating Weaver State to start the week before falling to Idaho State in the final seconds on Saturday afternoon. And Idaho picked up a pair of wins against Northern Arizona and Southern Utah to improve to 8-2 and two on the season. Michaela Ferenz and Taylor Pierce both had 21-point performances against Northern Arizona then followed up with 18-17 and 17 respectively. Natalie Klinker had an exceptional week for the Vandals, averaging 12-12 and uh, 12 in the two victories this week. Northern Colorado picked up one win uh, in their only game of the week to stay in the hunt for the top spot with a victory over Montana State. 84-73, to 73. Savannah Smith with a 37-point performance to lead the Bears and was one of the four players uh, to break the double-digit scoring mark for Northern Colorado. 
Idaho State currently sits atop the standings. Had a great week. They picked up two wins, including a victory over Portland State, 58-57, in a game that boasted the two best defenses in the league. And that game certainly did not uh, disappoint. Every second was needed in this one as the Bengals hit a last-second three-pointer to seal the victory. Uh, and, uh, boy, I tell you what, continue to get big win after big win is the Idaho State Bandal, or excuse me, the Idaho State Bengals. And joining us now, head coach Seton Sobleski. Coach, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Uh, doing well. Always fun to catch up with you. Congratulations. Huge win against Portland State. Take us through that final possession. And uh, what did you tell your team leading up into that moment? Well, it was actually a, just a mad scramble. <laughs> yeah, we had something – we had something planned, and uh, Portland State did a great job of guarding it. So it was just move the ball, find the open person, and and luckily the right person was open for the right shot, and uh, we won. How is it? What does that say about the maturity of your team when things break down that they're still able to keep their composure and uh, still find the best available shot? Well, I always think that's really big. You know, the one of the most valuable things you can have on your team is experience and. You know, we've got three seniors and then uh, several juniors with a lot of experience. And um, we, we're really big on freelance and, and making reads and, and kind of figuring things out on our own. We, ha- we have set plays, but, um, you know, being old enough to make the right decisions and to, to stay calm in that situation, that's obviously very big for us. When you look on paper on your team, uh, there isn't, you know, one player that stands out as okay. This person is going to be the leader every single night. You have different uh, different players stepping up on a nightly basis. Uh, what's that like coaching a team like that? And is it kind of fun for a coach to to kind of have that kind of uh, variety as far as who could be the person on each individual night? Yeah, well, no, like you said, it's it's really fun and it, it makes you feel better as a coach that uh, you have uh, options and your your team can uh, kind of figure things out. And, and when, when one person is not playing well, another person steps up. But, um, you know, in, in our, our system that we run, it's just um, there's a lot of equal opportunities, you know, and it, not for everybody for any shot, but, um, you know, that's the beauty of it. And that's also what it makes it difficult, I think, to play against sometimes is, you know, that everyone has an opportunity to score and everyone's motivated because they all feel like they have an opportunity to score and, and make things happen. And, and it's it's a fun system to play in. After obviously such an emotional game as he had on Saturday against Portland State, do you worry about any kind of a hangover effect, or do you feel like your team can enjoy it, put it away, and and move on to the next one? Well, I think as a coach, we're always worried about that. You know that yeah. complacency or getting carried away. Um, but I think our team is you know mature enough and old enough, and you know they've been in enough games and enough crazy situations that. You know, they know how to hopefully handle it right. You've got one of the best defenses in the conference this year, and you've held some good teams to some season lows in scoring. Uh, it Sometimes, as a coach, it's hard to get teams to buy in on defense, but this team certainly has. What does it say about this team that where they enjoy playing defense and they enjoy being, uh, you know, the aggressors on the court? Well, you know, again, it, it just it makes me very proud as a coach that, um, you know, that, They'll they'll go along and they agree with you know what the team philosophy is and and um, you know they're they again their experiences you know that they've learned through their own experiences they've learned that um, you know you're not always going to have a great offense at night but um, you can always have a great defense at night and even if uh, you're not shooting the ball well you still have a chance to win if you if you can play some great defense and that's what they've bought into and as as a coach you know it makes you feel a lot better and. Um, you feel like you have opportunity to win every game if, if, if you really believe in that. You know, there's just because you're a junior or senior just doesn't automatically make you a leader. It sounds like you've got some great leadership, though, on this team. Uh, have some of these players developed into that, or were they leaders right away, or how did how were you able to mold some of these great leadership qualities you have in some of your upperclassmen? Well, I think, you know, you look at Grace Kenyon, our, our super senior, you know, she's in her sixth year now yeah. uh, because of a couple uh, ACL injuries and to have someone that old and mature uh, within your group, you know, I don't know if she was a natural born leader, but she, she grew into that role just because she was the oldest. And um, same thing with Maddie Heinrichs, you know, she's um, in her fifth year of college basketball and you know, she's, she was three years in junior college and had to sit out one year and, and just having an older group like that to kind of guide everybody else um, is nice. And, and like I said, 
they're not – both of them aren't like your natural-born leaders. Like I think Callie Bourne, our, our freshman point guard, you know, once she gets a few more games under her belt, she – she is like she has a natural. She has that natural ability to lead and step up, and she's comfortable with that. But the other kids kind of grew into it. Well, coach, we certainly appreciate your time. Get it rolling, and or keep it rolling, I guess I should say. And uh, look forward to catching up with you in Boise. Sounds good. Th- thank you for the call. You got it. That's Idaho State head women's coach Seton Sobleski here on this week in Big Sky basketball. And we come back. We'll preview the week ahead in the Big Sky Conference. Also have a visit with Coulter Nuanez of Skyline Sports. And we'll also outline where you can find all the games on television this weekend. Stay with us. You're listening to This Week in Big Sky Basketball. Traveling to watch your favorite team, or do you just need a weekend away? Let My Place be your place for both. My Place Hotels is proud to be the official hotel of the Big Sky Conference. And now you can use booking code BIGSKY19 to receive 19% off your stay at MyPlaceHotels.com. Pluto TV is your one-stop shop for Big Sky action. The leading free internet television service in America will stream live sporting events, including up to 700 football, men's and women's basketball, volleyball, and selected soccer, softball, and track and field events. Simply go to Pluto TV to find games from several different sports. Pluto TV is your one-stop shop for all Big Sky action. Now, back to this week in Big Sky Basketball. Welcome on back. Final segment of the show here on this weekend, Big Sky Basketball. I'm Scott Gerard. Hey, the Big Sky Conference airs all of its live stream sports events on Pluto TV for free, including up to 700 football, men's and women's basketball, volleyball, and selected soccer, softball, and track and field events. All Big Sky games can be seen on Watch Big Sky and Pluto TV. In Big Sky women's basketball this week, Weaver State and Idaho State welcome in Southern Utah and Northern Arizona, while Montana and Montana State travel to Idaho and Eastern Washington. Portland State will play host to Sacramento State in Northern Colorado. Um, uh, will will host Sacramento State and Northern Colorado before the Bears travel down to Sacramento State to round out the action this week. For the men, Southern Utah and Northern Arizona play host to Weber State and Idaho State, while Montana and Montana State welcome in Idaho and Eastern Washington. Northern Colorado hosts Portland State and Sacramento State before travel partners Portland State and Sacramento State face off in the final game of the week in Sacramento. And again, all those games on Pluto TV and watch Big Sky for free and in high definition, whether it's a tablet, smartphone, laptop, or desktop, you can access all those Big Sky games anywhere. All right, always one of our favorite times of the week. We chat with Colter Nuanez of Skyline Sports. Colter, how are you, man? Not too bad, Scott. How you doing? Doing good, as always. All right, let's take a look on the men's side first. Jordan Davis has established himself as one of the top scorers in the nation. He's averaging about 24 points a game, has a chance to move into second on the Big Sky career scoring list this season. What's impressed you about his play this year and how he's developed into a player? Well, Jeff Linder has such a really good – I mean, he has such a, a, a concrete system. They, uh, defensively, they want to limit the three-point line, which is an excellent strategy in the Big Sky considering the prevalence of shooters in the league. And on offense, they want to play through one guy. We saw it last year with Andre Spite. He scored more points in a single season than anybody in the history of the Big Sky. And now Jordan Davis has fulfilled that role. And the thing that's been so impressive to me about Davis is Davis was a breakout star as a freshman, well, one of the best freshmen in the league. And his sophomore year, he was a first-team all-league guy and de- definitely the building block that they wanted to build around. But then when Spite was eligible and he only had one year left, Davis took a back seat and he was still able to be a third-team all-league guy and accept that role as the secondary scorer. And now that he's a senior, he's back playing on the ball, and he's leading the country in usage rate. He's leading the league in minutes played. And so his durability, his ability to handle all the pressure, his ability to be number one on the scouting report and still score the ball has been very impressive. I mean, he's a kid that I've always thought he was a high-level guy. He's a guy that got recruited by a bunch of Pac-12s, but no one really wanted to pull the trigger on him. And when Northern Colorado got him, I know they were super excited about it. And now uh, he's finishing uh, what has been an excellent career in Greeley. Montana State picked up that big win, though, in Greeley on Monday over Northern Colorado. What do you think has been uh, clicking for the Bobcats after that slow start? Well, I mean, make no mistake about it, that's the signature road victory of Brian Fisher's career. You talk about adversity. Montana comes into Bozeman last year, 
or last, excuse me, on Saturday, and uh, it was a classic Cat Grizz game uh, in front of nearly a sellout crowd at Brick Breeden Fieldhouse. Montana State gave Montana all they could handle, and then some. Tyler Hall was excellent in the first half, 21 points. Harold Frey was excellent the entire game, ended up with 15 points and 10 assists. And if you would have made a couple three-pointers, I think you're talking about one of the great games in the history of a really long and storied rivalry. So to lose that game, to give Montana everything they could handle, but lose at home in such disappointing fashion, and then to have to go on the road to the league-leading team, that's brutal. And I thought there was no way that they were even going to hang in that game. I, and it would have been acceptable for them to have a lull because of just the emotions coming off of Saturday. But instead, practice was their absolute best defensive ball game of the year. Their offense was not cooking, but they won that thing by stopping the ball. And Tyler Hall finally gets some retribution. He, he faded down the stretch against the Grizzlies. He did not fade down the stretch against Northern Colorado. Hit a big shot to go ahead, and then he sealed it at the free throw line. And the all-time score, leading scorer in the history of the league. Uh, he, he seems like now that he's got that record in his rear view, seems like he's a man on a mission. He really wants to write the narrative of his career. They have not won a Big Sky tournament game since he's been there, despite all his tremendous individual accolades. And uh, right now, with that win last night, that puts Montana State back in the mix to be in that race for one of the top five spots and the first round by in the Big Sky tournament in Boise next month. So uh, tremendous. You can't really understate just how big of a win that was for Brian Fish's crew in Greeley last night. Jacob Davidson had 41 in the win over Northern Arizona for Eastern Washington. Kids just a sophomore, uh, certainly one of the upcoming stars of the league, if not already a star. What are your thoughts on him, and what do you expect out of him uh, throughout the remainder of his career? I mean, I was really, I was really impressed with him last year as a freshman. It's great athleticism. And I knew he'd be a guy that was, had a chance to have an elevated role, given what Eastern lost, especially with Bogdan Blizniak graduating last year. But, I mean, last night that was a absolutely – I, I, it was one of the most surprising outbursts I've seen. I mean, I thought he was capable of scoring 25, but I didn't know he was capable of scoring 41. He was absolutely on fire just watching the highlights. He was taking it to the rim. He was finishing in traffic. He was shooting the three. I mean, talk about making shots. And, uh, I mean, that's uh, Eastern Washington has been one of the surprises in the league. I think everybody thought they'd take a step back after losing back-to-back MVPs and Jake Wiley and then Bogdan Blizniak. But a bunch of guys who've been role players for most of their careers, guys like Davidson and um, – Jesse Hunt, Mason Peetling, those guys have all stepped up, and now Eastern Washington, here they are. They've won five out of six, and they're right in the mix in the league. So, uh, per- tremendous performance. What a great breakout by Jacob Davidson last night. Let's move on to the women's side. Four really good teams this year. What's your prediction for the last half of the uh, conference season? Do you think uh, you know somebody's going to separate themselves, or do you think it's still going to be about a four-team race going down the stretch? Well, it's just such an interesting dynamic because I think that you have – Honestly, some of the premier players that the league has ever seen. I think Savannah Smith is an all-time great. She proved that in Bozeman last night, scoring 37 points, the most ever by a Northern Colorado women's player. Uh, you look at the Splash sisters for the University of Idaho, Michaela Ferenz and, and uh, Taylor Pierce, and, and they're the two most prolific three-point shooters in the history of the league. Uh, and then, you, But I think that a couple of the girls that are really underrated and, and girls that are really proven postseason players, Taylor Grandin and Grace Canyon at Idaho State, I think they have an argument to be amongst the mix of some of the best players in the history of the league as well, especially if Idaho State has success in the tournament. And then you look at Ashley Bolston, she might be the most naturally talented player, that uh, one of at least that the Big Sky has seen, and at least in recent years. And you pair her with Sydney Riley, you're talking about an all-star group. I mean, we did a podcast guy on Sports MT the other week picking our all-league selections for the women's side, and we had 15 or 16 girls in the mix. I mean, you talk about – Somebody like Jumani Welch Coleman, she wasn't even she didn't even get onto our our second team, even though she's averaging 18 points per game and one of the top assists, uh, one of the top distributors in the league too. So, uh, ton of talent in the in the women's side. A bunch of contrasting styles. I mean, you got Idaho who just shoots it better than anybody. You got Portland State who plays the funky zone and moves the ball really well on offense. You got Idaho State, the most physical team in the league. And you got Northern Colorado with the reigning MVP. So, I think it's going to be a really fascinating race down the stretch, and uh, I'm not sure which style will prevail. Well, Coulter, great stuff as always. We appreciate your time and look forward to catching up with you again here real soon. Hey, appreciate it, guys. We'll talk to you soon. You got it. Coulter Nuanez of Skyline Sports. A big thanks to him as well as Weaver State Guard uh, Jarek Harding and Idaho State women's head coach Seton Sobleski. Also, thanks to our producer Lloyd Cole and the executive producers of this weekend, Big Sky Basketball, Blake Barrington and Carl Hunt. I'm Scott Gerard. Enjoy the games this week. I'll be back with you next week for another edition of This Week in Big Sky Basketball.